Hi, I'm Punita Sabarwal, Managing Editor of Entrepreneur Media and today we have with us Mr. Sangeet Kumar, CEO and Co-Founder of AdWorks and we are at the Bot Valley in Noida which happens to be the first manufacturing facility of AdWorks. Sangeet, thank you so much for talking to Entrepreneur Media and congratulations on the initiative taken on the humanoid part. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, coming all the way uh, to Bot Valley and uh, this is a place where everything started. So, yeah, it started in a small place, which was a rented thing, but our first dream of building robots, this is the place where it started with different types of robot and you'll see some of them while... Sure, so let's get in. So Sangeet, we are standing at the shop store of Adverb and this looks massive. So tell us more in which year you incepted it and how many companies or customers you are serving from here. Okay, so uh, this factory that we established, we started building it in uh, 2020 and we completed it in nine months period. Okay. Uh, we have uh, around 300 customers today. Uh, we started mostly, mostly when we started, 90% of our customers were e-commerce or uh, retail. But today, we have customers in almost all the segments of business. Mm -hmm. So, 20% uh, of our business still comes from e-commerce and retail. Okay. But uh, we have customers in oil and gas, petrochemical, chemical. Okay. We have customers in electronics. We have customers in new energy, which is a a very upcoming field as far as uh, automation is concerned and when I say new energy it is solar, battery uh, etc. Uh, we have customer in consumer goods, okay. automotive. Okay, okay. And that you across India and international as well? Yes, so uh, when we started 100% was India. Uh, two and a half years back 70% uh, was India and 30% was overseas market but uh, recently and in the next three four years it would be around 40% in India and 60% overseas market so that is how our revenue uh, is uh, we have 100% subsidiary today in US uh, in Europe which looks after Europe Middle East and Africa market uh, we have 100% subsidiary in Australia, which looks after Australia and Singapore. And we have 100% subsidiary in Singapore, which looks after Southeast Asia. So we have today customers in 25 countries. So we have our robots running in 25 countries today. Yeah, so globally, uh, some of the customers are global customers. So customers like DHL, uh, we have uh, we have installation in US, in Europe, in Australia, etc. So they are our global customers. Okay. Interesting. Now we are at the third floor of Bot Valley and I believe this is where the entire R&D team sits and that is where all the action happens. Yes, so uh, this is a specific place where our advanced robotics team sits. Advanced robotics team, as I was explaining it to you, we started with mobile robots mm -hmm. and our mobile robots ranges from 6 kg payload to 60 tons payload. Mm -hmm. And these are fully autonomous vehicles, though in a controlled environment, it, it is not like roads and you have self-driving car running at 60, 80 mm -hmm. kilometer per hour. But in controlled environment, it is like a self-driving car which okay. lifts load from one place to another. So that is what we were doing and we have been doing for last eight years. But two years back, we decided that we will be in every form. So all the robotic forms, we will be there and uh, we started building cobots and cobots, these are cobots which you can see the one which is on the side, the one which is behind and these cobots are used for industrial application as well as medical application. 
so uh, the cobot which you see in the behind yeah. that is for ultrasound application okay. so and uh, several so these cobots the difference between a robot and a cobot is cobot is collaborative in nature so it can work with human it understands the work environment it understands when it cannot push more and so it understands the environment and it does not harm a human being and in the same work environment a human and a robot can work and that is why it is known as collaborative robot okay. once we did that then we said we will also build legged robots so one of the first legged robot is the quadruped okay. uh, this looks like a dog uh, robot and it is again mostly used for surveillance application okay. it is used in defense uh, now and there are in the world there would be around 10 companies uh, two three in us uh, two in europe okay. uh, three four in china and uh, we are one of the companies in india building these leg robots and these log robots, as I said, it is used for defense, surveillance in industry, in hazardous industry to see uh, it may be nuclear power, etc. Okay. So we built these robots and we launched it in last lodging. Okay. And uh, 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 yeah, so and the natural progression after cobot and a leg robot mm -hmm. is the humanoid which uh, we it just, just uh, announced yeah, yeah okay 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 so we'll move to another floor and we'll talk about it yeah. <laughs> So we are now standing in the backdrop of a human skull and uh, Sangeet is going to share some exclusive details with us about the humanoid which had the plans to launch in 2025. Mm -hmm. Sangeet? So uh, as I was telling you that uh, for us it was a natural progression and we wanted to have robots of every form factor and the toughest form factor today as far as robotics is concerned is the humanoid now there were humanoids even in 1990s mm -hmm. which honda was making another company but they were programmed to do a certain task yeah. uh, that is easy today what we say today and when we talk about humanoid today these humanoids would be capable of taking decisions based on reasoning. So it is not that you program it for certain activity. They would be generalist. They would learn from environment. They would learn from huge amount of data which is available on internet. Mm -hmm. They will learn from other robots. Okay. And then they will be able to do generalist tasks. And therefore, humanoids of today are also known as embodied, embodied AI or yeah. physical AI. Mm -hmm. So it is because decision making makes them so a form factor which is like human with two legs, two hands and a torso and a head etc. It makes a machine look like human but a machine to behave like a human the brain has to be evolved and that is happening today because of the uh, development which is happening in LLM and VLA and VLM, all these large language models. Uh, and because of that, humanoids of today, and which is what we are trying to build, will be able to take decisions based on the prompt or the environment. Okay. And that is what it would enable the humanoids to work shoulder to shoulder in rescue operation, in hazardous area, in medical application for assistive living, as well as in industry. That's interesting. And 
Is there a timeline which we could look at? Uh, by when in 2025 can we look at the device come out? Yeah, so uh, there, are, as a, uh, there are no fixed timelines. We, uh, we will try our best to get it out as soon as possible. But it is a tough task. It is even with the experience, so many robotists uh, who have worked for the last 20 years in the field of robotics, building a humanoid is the most challenging task. And which we uh, intend to do it really fast, we have to see how fast we can do it. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll talk about challenges. Yeah. So the way it functions, Sangeet, I mean, uh, like you said, that there are different companies both which various sectors you work for. So are there separate divisions dedicated to each one of them? For them, do you do the tasks? So we do have expertise, uh, and let us say for in battery industry or for solar. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is a project in solar industry, we involve those experts. So okay. that way we have industry experts. So maybe for fashion, for solar, for battery, mm -hmm. for automotive, for tires, etc. Okay. But uh, uh, to large extent, uh, we also try to develop generalists uh, who have knowledge of at least four or five industries. So that, and that happens in every function in our organization whether it is uh, solutioning, whether yeah. it is R&D uh, or project project management because every industry works uh, differently and we have to uh, fulfill their needs and many a times uh, there are certification requirements so let us say if we are working for pharma mm -hmm. there are heavy uh, uh, there are a lot of requirements and that uh, that way, so we have experts who support uh, those projects. Okay, okay. So, I mean, as far as I know, I mean, uh, there are companies like e-commerce and Lenskart who help with the automation part. So, can you share more on that? Yeah, so uh, Lenskart was a great project for us. Uh, and it is very near and dear uh, to me personally because I was personally involved in not only designing the automation system, but also designing the whole factory. Okay. And uh, Pius had uh, has this dream to build one of the most automated factory and one of the biggest factory in the world as far as eyewear is concerned. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we were able to do justice to his dream um, by first uh, envis envisaging the whole factory and then uh, automating it, the whole material flow. Uh, from the time you order uh, uh, a thing on Lenskart side, within 30-40 minutes it can be picked, within 3 hours, 4 hours it can be manufactured and distributed according to the uh, store where it has to go. So it is a uh, it is a rhythm uh, and it is a full-fledged uh, automation system at play uh, for a large-scale manufacturer. So Sangeet, while we were talking about the challenges and uh, I'm sure there must be multiple failures when you are developing something new and uh, when you are working on the prototype of the humanoid. I'm sure there might be a lot of failures you might go through. So how prepared are you because uh, the pressure is going to be looming large in your head because you have already made the announcement of humanoid. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, there would be several challenges which we can see at this point of time. Uh, the important thing is recognizing those challenges or anticipating those challenges and making a plan for it, how we will be able to take care of those challenges. I'm sure there are a lot of challenges uh, that would come in building uh, our humanoid. Uh, the important thing is to anticipate those challenges and 
plan for risk mitigation as far as those challenges are concerned. Humanoid, if you see, it is uh, there are challenges on two fronts. One is the physical body itself, which is an electromechanical body. And the other is software to make the robot stable or even to stand. Because it is, it, it, there are a lot of things which we consider very easy as human beings. Correct. One of them is standing. Yeah. The other is uh, seeing things and uh, deciphering what it is. Correct. Or even anticipating when you are on a railway station and you are walking. You exactly, there are so many people, and, but you still don't hit them because you exactly know the intent of the person who is coming from the opposite direction. Whether he will take a left turn or a right turn and accordingly. These are very natural, it comes very natural to human beings. Though it is also a learned thing for humans as well. But we learn it when we are kids, yeah. when we are children. Now, for this for robots to do this, it is a humongous task mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, to get so much of data to train our uh, humanoid and sure it will be a huge, huge task and where we will fail several times. But uh, even in the past when we were building, let us say, quadruped, uh, we Every failure for us is a learning exercise. And in that, uh, why I say learning exercise? Because we know that we don't have to do things in that way yeah. so that we are successful the okay. next time. So we know what not to be done. And because we have built a mobile platform, a quadruped, which is two hands effectively yeah. or two legs effectively, uh, or the perception system which goes uh, in a uh, uh, mobile robot, etc. All the failures which we had building those robots, those things I am sure we will not repeat. So we are in a much better shape or much better place when we were uh, in comparison to last eight years or in comparison to any other company which is starting from press. Uh, trying to build a humanoid because we come from this background we know what not to do okay uh, still to figuring out what to do there will be several things which we will learn mm -hmm. wherein we will say okay this is something which we don't have to do okay. uh, as a company one thing which we take extreme pride in is the speed at which we learn and the speed at which we fail. Any, no failure till today has deterred us in making a product. Once we have decided, we make that product. Come what may be. And that is what we will do in case of humanoids as well. Okay, wish you good luck <laughs> on that spirit. Thanks. Thanks. thanks.